Another way of showing action-reaction is a favorite of mine. I have this device here that I call my tennis ball cannon. Um, what I'm going to do is put a tennis ball on the end of it. And I'm going to put my tennis ball cannon fuel in this. Now, to those of you in the audience and at home, too, this is a flammable liquid, and it's a kind of a little special fuel that I use for this. Uh, I know you've heard this before, but really, don't do these kinds of things at home. Don't light a fuel at home. This is a fuel that will have a slight explosion, but it's made so that it will go out very quickly and will not spread. If you try to use liquids at home that are flammable, it can be tremendously dangerous to you. So this is something you're going to have to watch, and you can't do this at home. I'm going to put my fuel in the end there. I'm going to light my match, and what I want you to observe is what happens. I want you to watch the ball, and I want you to watch the cannon. So you're going to have to observe very, very carefully here. Are we ready? Fire! Oh! <laughs> kind of a surprise, and it's hard to watch, isn't it? What did the ball do? It went that way, slow or fast? Fast. Went pretty fast, didn't it? What did the cannon do? It also moved, didn't it? It moved backward. For every force, there's an equal and opposite force. Did the cannon move fast? No, the cannon moved very, very slowly. Now I wonder why. Those forces are equal, aren't they? Let's go back at Newton's second law. He says that for every force, there's an equal and opposite force. But force is a function of two things, mass and acceleration. Why didn't this have the acceleration that the tennis ball had? It has a lot more mass, many times more mass. So this is a great example not only of Newton's uh, third law, but of Newton's second law, too.